Welcome everyone to another episode in the perspective drawing series. In this video we are going to look at some useful methods for rotating objects when drawing. Now when it comes to rotating objects it can get quite complex but as always let's start off with some basic examples and work our way up. When you want to accurately rotate objects in your drawings it's often a good idea to produce a grid on the ground plane but I will be doing a full episode on creating grids so in this video I just want to focus on some alternative methods that are just as useful. So every time you draw something you'll likely find yourself needing to draw various things on different angles. Let's draw a box in one point perspective. Next to this I'm going to draw another box on a different angle, rotating it so that we can see two sides. This will be in two points perspective, it has its own vanishing points. As I draw in more boxes on different angles, these are all converging to their own vanishing points which exist on the same horizon line. So as these boxes rotate horizontally, the vanishing points move at the same time but remain on the same horizon line. In this example I'm not drawing these boxes to scale or anything, we will take a look at that later. So now let's run through a useful method that involves dividing and we have covered these techniques in a previous episode so you should be familiar with this. Here I am going to draw out some squares at the same size and I begin to divide these up into equal sections. Even though these are just flat projections, remember that all of this can be applied when drawing in perspective. Now that all of these have been split up into quarters, we can now use these points of division to draw in a new square at a specific angle. Here on this first one, I'm able to use those points of division to draw in a new square at 45 degrees. I am going to divide this next square further and this will establish some new points which I can then use to create a square at 22.5 degrees and I can rotate it round further and this is a really useful method for establishing a new angle for an object that you are drawing once you have rotated the box you can then use it to construct whatever it is you are drawing on that angle. And so now let's rotate some boxes of different sizes in perspective. Here I will do this below, starting by drawing out a box in one point perspective and then repeating those same divisions on its bottom and top plane. I am then able to join these divisions vertically and construct a rotated box. I will continue to do the same with the next two, again this does not have to be 100% accurate but it's useful to know in case you want to get close to a specific angle. Let's take another look at a different method for rotation and this one can be quite complex because it involves ellipses and we haven't looked at them yet but we'll be covering them later. So I have drawn in the horizon line here but before I draw in perspective I want to demonstrate what we need to do from a flat projection and then I'll just repeat it in perspective. So like I said this one involves ellipses which are circles in perspective so here I'll just be drawing in a circle and the best way to draw in a circle or an ellipse is to construct it within a square. For the purpose of this tutorial I will use a compass to draw in this circle here and you can divide the square up like we normally do and find the centre point. Also notice how the circle touches each point of division. But anyways we have this circle in a square and what we are going to do now is we are going to establish a box and then rotate the box to a new position using the circle and the centre point is the point of rotation, it's similar to a hinge and the box will swing around. 
And so I'm just going to use this as a starting position. This is the box we want to rotate. And so the next thing I do is I find the angle that I want for this new box. And this can be anywhere. Here this diagonal division is 45 degrees. The horizontal one above would be 90 degrees. So let's go for a point in between this. I'll be covering another method that is similar to this in the next episode. But I am drawing a square here so I know that my other line will be perpendicular to this at 90 degrees. The next two lines are tangent to this circle and are also perpendicular. This allows me to draw in that rotated square. If this is confusing, don't worry, it, it might make more sense in perspective. So now let's take a look at that. So let's draw a box in one point perspective and divide both the bottom and top plane. This will make it easier to construct the ellipse. We are doing the exact same thing here as we did a moment ago, except this is being done in perspective this time. So here I just use the divisions to assist me in freehanding this ellipse. Ellipses are challenging, but like I said, we will get to them in a later episode. So once I have drawn an ellipse on both the top and bottom plane of the box, I am able to join these together to form a cylinder. And now we have some depth to these flat ellipses. Also, here is the box which we started with, and I'll just shade this in so you get a better idea. But now we are ready to rotate the box around the center point of that cylinder. And so I begin by finding my angle of rotation. Once I have that on the bottom and top plane, I can then join them both with a vertical line at the point where they meet the ellipses. This then creates that plane for the box. And remember that we are doing this in perspective. So there are vanishing points. Uh, like I said in the first example, as objects rotate, the vanishing points move as well, but always remain on the same horizon line. So by extending these lines of that plane of the box, I'm able to find that vanishing point on the right. And then I can also find the left vanishing point by extending the lines from the other plane of the box. And this vanishing point seems to be away from the drawing space here. Now that I know the position of the vanishing points, I'm able to finish constructing this box. And these planes will be perpendicular. Like I said, you can rotate the box on any angle, swinging it around. And if you take a look at how this example compares with that flat projection, you can easily see how it translates when drawn in perspective. So I have decided that I will do another episode on rotation and build on top of these examples a bit more, just explain them more in depth and uncover some things that might help you. But to conclude this first one, let's create a more appealing example. I need something that looks good for the thumbnail instead of just plain boxes. So here I am going to construct and render some ammunition crates and put them on different angles. In this example, you can see how the vanishing points for each of these boxes meet at different points on the horizon line. Some are in two points perspective and some are also in one points perspective. I'm just going to let this example play out in time lapse. Okay, so that wraps up this episode. A lot of the methods that I demonstrated here can be quite complex, but if you have a go at them yourself, you'll start to piece it together and understand them more clearly. 
Also do consider checking out the Patreon page because I create these study documents which are pretty much tutorials on paper, but it might help to get a better understanding of the methods explained through the videos. With that being said, thanks for watching.